The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. Here's Brandon. Welcome to Old Space Show. I'm Brandon, and writing shotgun is Tony Schaub. Hey, yo, everybody. Let's uh, go for a ride, shall we? All right. Uh, this series of Old Space Show will follow the exploits of a man in his car, the first season of Night Rider. This is kind of like the third Doctor era of Old Space Show, where we're Earthbound, we're stuck to Earth. We got like sci-fi concepts, but we're like <laughs> we're we're stuck with Earthbound mysteries. It happens. That's what they get. Uh, today we are here to discuss the fifteenth uh, episode. Give me liberty. Dot. 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 Or give me death. There it is. We got there. So, <laughs> all right. In this episode, Michael and Kit enter the Alternative 2000, a cross-country race for cars that run on alternative fuel. They are there to find a saboteur, not to win, but they find themselves having to rescue nosy reporter Liberty Cox in each lap. Yeah, Alternative 2000 could have also been like a, a compilation CD in the 90s. <laughs> Now that's what I call alternative. I mean, it really, I mean, I'm sure it sounds, I'm sure it sounded super futuristic to them back then. But yeah, yeah, by the time we're watching it here now in the year of our Lord 2023, we're like, oh boy, another 2000s thing. Hot dog. Yeah. Give me a, give me a floppy disk and, and hope for the best. Featuring no <laughs> doubt, the Smashing Pumpkin, Bush, <laughs> Soundgarden. Um, all right. So this was uh, directed by Bernard L. Kowalski. Written by David Braff and starring David Hasselhoff, Edward Mulhair, Patricia McPherson, William Daniels, Robin Dearden, Brett Halsey, Alan Fudge, Francine Lemby, Richard jo uh, Richard Young, Kai Woof, and Shab Shimono. Um, yeah, uh, this is a episode based around like a Lamaze type race or something where yeah. they're just like racing around and stopping in the middle of the night and. Picking up yeah, it's later. kind of a yeah, an odd uh, yeah, like an odd. I mean, I guess I know that's kind of like the international. Like, there's a lot of international, like around the world mm -hmm. type of races and things that kind of take that. And it's very interesting because the stakes feel super low early on, right? They're like, oh, you know, Devin's like, it's you know, you're you're, you're going to be in this because there's a saboteur there. You're not supposed to win it, but it's just mm -hmm. a little thing to show off these alternative fuels. And then by the end, like the doctor is like. If this race doesn't go through, it'll it'll set the the automotive industry back twenty years. I'm like, geez, you know, like where, where do we land on the needle here? <laughs> varying degrees of intense. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and it's like a super science nerd race too. It's not like just like your speedy cars. You've got like the solar paneled car. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you've got the car that is the General Lee without the decals. Uh, that's hilarious. Off. We were yes, runs off moonshine. moonshine yes, yep. uh, we were. And we were just talking about the. Uh, it was more than a couple episodes ago. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the uh, surprise that we had where there was never an actual physical Duke Hazard crossover. But yes, here mm -hmm. we have an orange Charger that's driven by. Uh, a pair of cousins who have very clearly Confederate flags on their uniforms and their names are Duke and Prince. Like, don't tell me you weren't trying right. to and, make the unofficial crossover happen. <laughs> and you made that car crash out and explode and That's killed right. them and killed That's them in right. it. They did so, not survive. So <laughs> shots fired from Knight Rider over to the Dukes of Hazzard oh, yeah. set. I was generally genuinely shocked that I, that there wasn't like a, uh, a sheriff in like a wide brim hat, like stomping on his hat in the background as the as the as the characters died, <laughs> or like, you know when it when it jumped to hear the faint tones, dulcet tones mm -hmm. of the uh, of the uh, horn doing its you know last last call or something like that. So <laughs> yep, Daisy Duke, Liberty Cox, 
Oh my uh, goodness gracious. Yeah. It, and these guys, I mean, let's stay on them for a sec. They make them just reprehensible the whole time. Like they are oh, yeah. gross Trash. towards Liberty and all like, you don't, mm-hmm. it makes it real easy for like, Oh shoot. The hillbillies got blown up. Oh no, no, they like, died. That's too bad. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do with it? There and there were there were some I read online there were some conflicting reports I that's probably lost to the ages mm-hmm. now but there are some sites out there that say that 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 this orange sixty nine charger was a was it was an original stunt copy of mm-hmm. the General Lee okay. but other ones say no it can't be because the door is open and it's like a regular it just happens to be an orange oh. colored charger so I, I don't know where where it falls on that but yeah some some places are like yeah they per- they bought it from Warner Brothers I'm like yeah is this real or is this just what you want it to be right. I, exactly I yeah. the <laughs> in the early days of the internet somebody got that onto an IMDB trivia and so many people read it and sure seems to be true just like I, but there, yeah, I, I once yeah, made up. Uh, oh, go ahead. And no, I was just gonna say there. Even though there, even though that may not be true, there's no doubt that the writers were mm-hmm. all in with oh, the yeah. Duke and Prince and the Confederate flag and running moonshine in your car and it runs on moonshine like like you couldn't have been any more like no mistake in your in your blatant references here. <laughs> oh, and they 100 have my have Kit do all the stuff you'd see the the General Lee do in that show. They're like jumping and getting ahead and oh yeah, oh yeah, all the cool stuff. Um, but no, like I remember, so like speaking of like, does IMDb still have the forums anymore that they used to, where you'd have a movie and there'd be a message board because like I was talking about putting false information. I, I, on the message board, um, me and a friend one time back in the day, we would put a rumor about uh, a kickboxer reboot back in the OOs that we were talking about and people (laughs) bought it. And then there was a, uh, Hey dude, the movie, if you remember Uh. And we called it, hey, dude, the movie, The Texas Drift. And like people debated whether this was a true report or not the whole time. <laughs> I love it. I love but, it. <laughs> like we had like that Danny character. He was he was killed in the opening scene. They're like, why would they do all this just to kill him in the open? People were people bought at least enough to debate it. <laughs> That's so funny. That's, <laughs> That's awesome. what you could do back in the days of IMDb. Um, I, I, I know it. people question the site now, but it's it's a lot of it. The information on there is legit when it comes to direct credits and stuff. Trivia section, that's its own <laughs> beast. But a lot of the credits are are mo. I'd say it's mostly pretty pretty well done. So, um, this episode, uh, this one does open up interesting. We have a night time truck headquarters on the move like scene um yeah we're getting a lot more of uh yeah we're getting a lot more of the of the uh night on the move there you know now mm-hmm. that we've moved into you know first the the idea was was created in, in its infancy the white tractor trailer was just out there doing its thing and now we've got mm-hmm. the full you know as of a few episodes ago we've got the full black one with the chest piece on the side it's very very official they're they're obviously wanting to reuse the shot as much as possible of Mm -hmm. uh michael or a stunt driver driving into the driving into the truck while it's in motion on the road i'm sure they're very proud of that one and backing out of it as well so Mm -hmm. um but uh what always what never fails to get me is is when they show so first there's the exterior shot where you see kit going into the truck on on the ramp as they're both driving which is great i love that and then they they cut to a quick shot inside the truck where you can clearly see like and, and well first of all you can clearly see they're going like 12 miles an hour like right. the, the road couldn't be passing more slowly but also you can clearly see that there's just enough space <laughs> for the Trans Am in there and mm. they switch to the exterior stage sound shot where Michael can open the door and get out oh, and yeah, like, yeah. it's like a triple wide trailer what are you doing right <laughs> yeah you've it's like a TARDIS <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> He needs to be like the General Lee to be get out, getting out of there, or maybe That's it's like right. sun, get out the sunroof. Which he he could be, yes, ask Kit to eject him very gently. Yep. He's to be more so. Mm-hmm. And he try he tries to ask Bonnie out, but she is staying the night in with Kit. We have a love triangle. Oh, look love out triangle. now! Yeah, look out! Um, <laughs> and then yeah, of course he's assigned this race, which isn't the first time he's been assigned something like car race related. Uh, in the show, that's kind of probably a, a topic that'll continue through other seasons when it's like, well, we got to go to the old dirt trail and do something because we need to say there's, 
there's only so many car related plot lines and devices you can throw out. I mean, this is a show right. back when they did 20 episode, 20 to 24 episode seasons. Like there's only so much you can do to get a car, especially when a car is your co-host essentially yeah. to get them to drive around. Yeah. <laughs> I do love when they get there. Uh, someone's like interesting car. And he goes, well, it's an interesting race. <laughs> so, it was so stupid. I loved it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you meet all the cars. Uh, and then the first like problem with the car is the solar power car. We get to see like a suitcase shotgun when, you know, we put the, or not shotgun, but sniper rifle. We put those yes. together and who's shooting, who's shooting. And then like that car almost goes off the cliff and there's a new the TV crew that's like just watching it. Like they're like, like a modern day person with their cell phone watching something they should probably be helping <laughs> out with. Uh, and they're like, this is better than the French connection. And it's for real. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, OK, one that there is nothing right there. That's like the French connection at all. <laughs> but get off your ass and go help that person. So, yeah, you're right. And of course, it was the it was the one lady driver of the race. So I'm not trying to say that it was, uh, you know, some some inherent 80s sexism. But uh, mm -hmm. but of course, but, you know, they, Michael was more than happy to help, of course, and make sure. Oh, yeah. And once again, we get, the, we get the thing where Kit, you know, he's got a he's got a grappling hook, right? Like out the back, like mm -hmm. and like everybody could see, including the news crew who's actively taping them. Everyone right. can see that this is a super fancy like spy car. But no one really seems to care anymore. No. You know, everybody's like, oh, no good well, fucking a, car. I get it. This is a race where he could fit in with that, right? All the way. Yeah, conceivably, I suppose. Uh, there is a somehow in the lead, there's a Datsun without a back and a dune mm -hmm. buggy at one point. So I guess this is it, uh, at times this feels like a Hanna-Barbera race more than right. anything else. Oh, but yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's close enough. So that's perfect. <laughs> Hanna that is perfect. The Hanna-Barbera race. Uh, and I will say, too, like, speaking of that crew that's not helping. It's not like it's a cameraman and a guy giving him direction. It is like six dudes. Like yes. one of you could be spared to go help. Yes. Two. Well, and and it's well, it's funny too, because like they like clearly they're they're like standing there like this is great. And like, oh gee, I wonder who the bad guy of this episode is going to oh, be. I could, know. could it possibly be the guy from the cable network who's recording all this? Like they work so hard to do the mysterious, like who's got the rifle thing and like plant it in someone else's room and i'm like you you literally you're, you're telegraphing the whole thing i don't know if the writers just gave up or they figured in 42 minutes they couldn't they just did what they yeah. could i don't know well like that when they <laughs> plant the sniper rifle in the other guy's room it's like dude we are not even halfway through the episode you know we're, you know it's not oh, him yeah. like who are you fooling right. the People whose clocks aren't broke or something like. And like, yes, and it's so, doubly insulting that <laughs> that Devin is there yeah. and he's like, "Well, that seals it. It's all done. Like it's all oh, yeah, wrapped up in a nice little I'm like, "You fool, Devin Miles!" <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> the, yeah. Devin wants is Devin involved? Is he trying to throw this under the rug? Yeah. Like, well, and Bonnie comes up too, and they do another like stupid. Like I don't think the person who wrote this has seen the shit they're talking. He's like. She shows up, she goes, the race, she goes, oh, this looks like a Fellini movie. <laughs> they just ah, try to try to throw as many uh, yeah, references as they could in there. <laughs> like what? Like I, the person jotting stuff down to go back and check is going to be like, what in the hell were they talking about? This isn't like that episode <laughs> of Knight Rider at all. Absolutely not. Yeah, like I was, it was just really funny. The two drops of movie references that I were like, wow, real, like what? Like, it could have been like, well, was Cannonball Run out? Yeah, Cannonball Run had been out. Yeah, I guess that's true. It is yeah. like Cannonball Run, but it's real. Like, do that. And maybe they were trying hard to get everyone's attention away from the Dukes of Hazard blatant ripoff thing. Right, right, right. <laughs> so right. all the other things we could possibly think of in there to get, to, to get people off the scent. Gotcha. <laughs> we haven't talked about Liberty yet. Liberty Cox, the reporter that's all You're over right. this. Which, you know what? At one point, I'm like, is she involved with this shit? Like, and we're like, they're doing a really good job of hiding it. No, yeah. but um, there, there was a point where I'm like, man, she is all up over this. I feels like she's supposed to be kind of a red herring, but then maybe she just, it, maybe I've seen too much stuff since the 80s 
that now I'm com- overthinking things. And... Correct. Yes. I'm like, I've seen one too many knives out mysteries to, yeah. to, to not suspect every single person in this episode for right. a very valid, in my mind, a very valid reason. So yes, right. I, I get you. So <laughs> and, and she sneaks into Michael's room too, which was the interesting. And he's like, she wants to interview with him. And he's like, I don't think your readers would be too interested in me. And she goes, I'm not interested in my readers. <laughs> They really these these yes this this back half of the season they've thrown the indie right. window out the window. Oh yeah, it really gets it really gets pretty skeevy here towards the end. <laughs> Which it was that it was that scene and that line where I'm like maybe she's not even with anybody and is like some sort of undercover something or some saboteur because like yeah acting like a reporter. Uh, but uh, she wants to ride in Kit, but Michael's like nah. And uh, she's like, didn't last night mean anything to you? <laughs> and at this time, Bonnie is inside Kit, getting out of it, hearing uh, hearing it all. And Michael's like, I wanted to see if I could extend your tracking scope's range. And she goes, D-, uh, he's like, and she goes, he goes, did you? She goes, no, but I can see you extended yours. Like, <laughs> uh, innuendo is just. Oh. It's very impressive. It's It's very impressive. Uh, not as oh all something was impressive but i said what wasn't impressive is there was a scene where michael's driving and kit says check my schematic visuals and the screen literally is just a screen that says road narrows that's it (laughs) it's not a map it's not anything you're right it's two colors. It says road narrow. <laughs> so, You're right. We're still in like the excite bike mode. I feel like certain graphics were moving into the 16 bit world, but certain, mm-hmm. yeah, certain moments like that, it's like, oh, they didn't even try. And there's one, yep. I think it's the next episode or the episode after where he some at some point gets equipped with a printer because he's a little, little dot matrix oh, yeah. printout starts to come oh, out yeah, when, yeah, when yeah, Michael yeah. needs like a suspect sketch. And it's like, okay, we're trying to get technologically advanced here but still not quite there yet yep. um <laughs> so michael um he does jump the general lead we talked about that where the blows up and the tv crew once again watches like um and but kit when it blows up he goes, michael that was no accident my sensor picked up a detonation signal seconds before the explosion yeah oh they did not count on kit being around of course not all. no no uh the, uh, yes uh, Liberty overhears this whole thing about the guys who are behind it, and it's being done for the rating. Gasp! Right, my goodness, and uh, yeah, how did I mean? Yeah, so I, I'm like shocking no one, of course, but then of course she's this. This at least serves to separate her from those questions that at least you and I had earlier of like, is she mm-hmm. part of it? Is she is she mm-hmm. a, you know, a, a true journalistic reporter? And of course, whoever did the, did the writing at least got the chance to tie it back to the fact where she tried to get into the first driver's meeting right. and failed. And that's why, of course, she's at this driver's meeting hiding out in like the concession stand. Yep, I think. Yep. <laughs> I mean, there is some like if- low quality hotel like dining area with like the continental breakfast. Like that's where the, oh, yes. a lot of these happen. And it's the obvious cable guy, like from the beginning, that's taken. Like, you know, it's funny because I don't know how original this idea concept would have worked then but now it's like we've seen this shit so much that it's like when that guy gave that first speech i'm like i bet this is gonna have to do something with him and trying to get ratings 100 percent. although it's really funny here now in 2023 is that like back in the 80s the cable guy's like we have to get this because i want the ratings to go up and i need the future to Mm -hmm. be cable i need cable to be relevant and here we are in 2023 in the in in the streaming land where you could hear a cable executive Saying and doing maybe the exact same <laughs> <Yes>. thing. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. How do we keep the NFL? Oh. Um, so, the, <laughs> the and the cable guy was, of course, hired, like, the cold, like, soulless, death-loving guy as his contractor. And I was like, you know, we got to crack a few eggs. And, you know, that kind of guy. <laughs> and it's just like, geez. I'm, and then Michael has the realization of what's going on where he's like, Kit. Every accident has taken place in front right in front of a camera, exploited in publicity. Because he's got the map. He's like, where did all the accidents happen? Where are the camera crews at? Now put where all the accidents happen. It's like, right. 
<laughs> and then go back to kids showing road narrows. Uh, right, no, right, yeah. No, I, I wish, but no, he's actually got a little graphic. Yeah, yeah. I'm like this. This is where Michael spells it out for American audiences who are too dumb to already put the pieces that are like eighty percent put together. Considering 100% Michael of the way <laughs> saw the camera crews at both of the places where accidents happened. Like, yeah, this shouldn't be any sort of a grand realization at this point, but whatever. <laughs> and we get like super old school, like snidely whiplash where Liberty's tied up with like a bomb and a fuse slowly burning. Like it is the weirdest, most convoluted thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, like it's like, what did this writer do? Did he do Dudley do right? Like Rocky and Bullwinkle? Was that where he came from? No. no yes. <laughs> um but yeah kit saves her by taking the brunt of the bomb explosion when they rescue her um michael chases a van flipping it the news van uh and liberty snaps a photo of him apprehending the people it's just it, it, yeah the the emotional the emotional gamut is is thoroughly run in this episode right. uh no no more transparently than when the charger explodes and Liberty does make sure yes. she grabs her camera, which was conveniently conveniently thrown out of the car moments before. Right. And starts taking pictures and he runs up and like shakes her and he's like, Is that all this is a story to you? And she like breaks down in his arms. I'm like, Oh, someone was trying really hard for a daytime Emmy that they're never going to get, but okay. Oh right. <laughs> uh, yeah, we get the uh the end uh little epilogue scene where uh, Bonnie and Michael have like they're taking pictures with the trophy and Devin's pissed because he goes it gets goes against the grain to see a man rewarded for insubordination because Michael won the race and he wasn't supposed to he was just to be there that's right observer. God forbid <laughs> but they get a phone call that uh there was a disqualification and it'll have to be raced again and Michael jumps at wanting to race again and Devin's like no and it's a freeze train <laughs> And, it's like uh, one of those funny, yeah. It's like one of those funny, like final. It's it's very eighties, obviously, when they're like, um, you know, like you, you you get that final little like moment where everybody. Mm -hmm. you know, it's 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 akin to like the the freeze frame of them like jumping in the air at the end, you know, like that's, that's what they're going for. So. <laughs> oh yeah, like for big comedic. I, I do like that they're they're finding ways to get Devin and Bonnie more present and involved in the episodes, and not like feel like they're forced in so they can have yeah. bigger roles um this one is just basically a excuse for racing and stunts type episode of night rider that's i think every right. couple, every three episodes we're gonna get like something like this you're right but and, once again like like we said throughout this entire first season the production values on the actual car stunts and mm -hmm. what we're seeing on the road is phenomenal. Like it's yeah. super engaging, like even today. So, yeah. so I know that they were, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's clear for us all to admit, like this is a very thinly based show around seeing a cool car, mm -hmm. do cool shit. Yeah. Period. <laughs> and it delivers. I mean, it, it delivers on being an action show and, uh, having high production value car chases and and explosions stunts stuff like that um even in some of the other episodes we we're talking about this block it's like there's some like stuff like wow they did that on a tv show cool uh wouldn't mm -hmm. imagine that so i mean yeah and this is a dumb episode but one that comes with value in the important areas that you need so yes yeah. so i didn't think it was too much i didn't think it was like oh this is just awful it was just like well okay i know what the jig is here uh but it's got some cool stuff along the way with the racing and explosions and, and things and some laugh some unintentional laughs that come uh, <laughs> it, so. it's all yep. right uh so all right tony let's shift gears and look on toward the sunset before we hit the horizon where can people keep up with you yeah, you can come find me around the internet, mostly at the old uh, the Facebook and the Instagram and the Twitters at Tony Schaub. And of course, you can come hang out with me in my nerdy capacity as the senior editor of sciencefiction.com, where we talk about all the fun news and reviews and just kind of have fun with all that good old genre stuff. Gotcha. All right. Hashtag the South Lost. Just want to put that out there. Hey, there it is. <laughs> they did. Uh, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon4KUHD. We're going to work on why so blue.com. Uh, the Scream retrospective continues Monday uh, as we will be on 
Scream three, I believe, is where we'll when this episode lands and where we'll be at. If I hit that on the money, you know it. I'm good. Uh, if not, well, you either heard that or are going too soon. So I'm not too far off. All right. But uh, also come back here Wednesday for another night ride adventure. But from old space. Brandon and Tony, not so lone crusaders in a dangerous world. The world of old space show. Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Olsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetershow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetershow.com. The show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found. 